Well, welcome everybody to Ignite Humanity Live. I'm your host, Lady JB, and always excited to be here because, well, we get to talk about igniting humanity. And in addition to that, today is Friday. So Friday is all about making fantastic connections. And we're going to connect with you. You're going to connect with our guests and you're going to go out and connect with somebody else. And that connection is what's going to grow our connections throughout humanity and make us all feel closer and more connected, of course. You're going to hear the word connections a lot today because it's Friday, we're igniting humanity, we're doing something big, and we want you to be a part of it. So welcome to the show. If this is your first time being here, we love that you're here and you're here for a reason. You're going to learn something today. You're going to hear one thing today that's going to make a massive difference in your life. It's going to start moving the needle in a great way. And if you show up every day, every week, we want to say thank you for being here because we bring great guests on the show to talk about their Ignite moments, the big thing that moved the needle for them, what got them inspired and motivated, what helped them build some new connections to make some great leaps and strides in their life. Now, this morning I was thinking a little bit about, I'm feeling pretty good. I've been going through some major things like everybody else with the moon and the eclipse and the stars. And life has just had some challenges. And recently, I've been feeling so much better. And what was the thing that helped turn it around? Well, if you're feeling low, if you're feeling tired, if you're feeling anything that's challenging in your life, if you're feeling like you just can't get up on top, I want to tell you the one way to get through it all is through giving. Start giving. If you want to get something, you got to give. If you want to go somewhere, you got to step forward. If you want something to come to you, you got to be willing to give. And if you're feeling sad and depressed and lonely and unfulfilled and all of those things are coming down on you, I have the key and it's all about giving. You want to start giving, giving your time, giving your ear, giving your, um, you know, your ability to listen to people, giving some hugs, giving some smiles, giving some friendship, just giving camaraderie, giving thanks. These are the things that are going to pull you out of those emotions and move you forward toward the trajectory of your life. You want to be in giving mode and that is going to make you feel better. And when you feel better, you radiate that towards other people and that gets them feeling better and that they start giving and then more people start giving. And can you see how it all works? So many different ways that we can start igniting humanity and it all starts with each and every one of us. All right. Well, if you want to know more about the Ignite Humanity family, go check out our website because we've got lots of fun stuff happening there. In fact, we're doing a book, a compilation book where we are telling Ignite stories and we're looking for people just like you who have a powerful story, who have an Ignite moment who've been through some trials and tribulations and you've learned some lessons, you've gained some golden nuggets. And from that, you want to share a story so that you can help others. This really is a project about helping and inspiring others. And we would love to have you be a part of it. Go check up our, our website and be a part of our Ignite Humanity book. All right, well, we've got a great guest today. We always love to bring interesting and dynamic people onto the show because we love diversity and we love to have different voices and we love to have different points of view. And if we're going to ignite humanity, we're going to invite people from all over the world, from every corner of every aspect so that we can get a new understanding of different things and be aware of how we can make an impact on different modalities in our lives because we all have to be signing up to be the one to make the effort. We have to sign up to life, sign up to a mission, sign up to a decision. We have to sign up and say yes. So we want you to say yes today. Well, welcome everybody. So Miss Renee Brown is the co-founder and president of Next Level Recovery, a behavioral health clinic and the co-founder and president of Sober Living Properties, a recovery housing program in Utah. Additionally, she is the co-founder and president of Medical Mindshare, an innovative medical center designed to deliver an integrative care model to the local community. She's also active in local community fo uh, functions and focuses on human services. A beautiful woman. Welcome her to the show. Hi, Renee. Happy to have you here. Hi. Thanks so much for having me. I'm just really looking forward to this. And I just have to say, I just love the values of Ignite Humanity. I just think it's so beautiful, so heartwarming, and uh, and it's just really going to make this experience that much more delightful because I just feel so kindred with everything that you're doing. Thank you so much for saying that. And you know, I'm finding that more and more everyone I talk to is feeling like, yes, we need to ignite humanity. Yes, we need to turn our attention in that direction. And thank you for being here and all of our guests. I'd love to start a little bit because obviously a lot of people are facing challenges right now. 
Uh, there is an epidemic of other things, mental health and addiction. You work in the recovery industry. Can you talk a little bit about what's been happening? What's the shift? What's the change? What's going on in your industry specifically? Well, I think we are in an industry where we're experiencing more growth than ever. I mean, we're actually eclipsing the growth of what's happening in IT for the first time. Wow. And that's just because of the new and the fresh modalities that are available. And that's something that I'm passionate to be able to bring to the underserved. So at our centers, for the most part, we're really helping people who have experienced chronic homelessness and chronic addiction. And we are making such a difference in the state of Utah. In fact, we're a first go-to for the state to take a look at, to help anybody out. And I, I do have a background in uh, technology. I taught emerging technology internationally for about 12 years. That was my first life. And I will tell you, the gold nuggets that can be had from there has really been able to help me with what we're able to deliver as far as a freshness and program for substance abuse and mental health, where we're able to keep track of a few more elements that just make so much sense. So uh, one of the subjects I'm passionate about is called the social determinants of health. Hmm. And what it is, is it's a standard of worldwide wellness. So it's beyond what we're measuring and taking a look at here in America. It's really uh, an internationally sound principle. And in the thick of that is housing, which is probably where my my heart rests, you know, first, as far as of all of the things that I do, my housing program is really something that I see making more of a difference than anything that my husband and I have ever done together. And I'm and I'm so grateful to also be able to work with him. Yes. What a great team. That's fantastic. I too get to work with my husband. It's such a blessing. Let me ask you a little bit. There is some stigma around the homelessness uh, epidemic. There is some stigma around people who suffer from addiction. Can you break down that a little bit and awaken us up to some of the truths behind that, that, you know, people make judgments, people make opinions, people just have an idea, but they really don't have a clear idea. Can you educate us a little bit and give us some more information to have the better understanding of how that impacts people and how other people can potentially support and be more compassionate, mm -hmm. understanding, empathetic to this situation? Well, I can really appreciate what you're saying because I think historically that has been just a bottleneck as far as what services can we offer, our freedom of communication, how much can we say, how much can't we say. But I think we've seen a profound shift and that's been with COVID because we're now looking at, I think the stats are like a 30% rate of depression since that hit. And that is changing our narrative as far as, I think what we feel at liberty to talk about I have three teenage girls and they really, you know, help me, you know, keep very sober and thought as far as what's going on in this world, you know, because I'm in, you know, a, a world that's a little bit more confined, but, you know, something that I love that they express is that mental health that's being talked about at the high school level. Mm -hmm. It's okay. They're cheerleaders on top of the matter. So right. with that, that they're telling me it's okay to talk about mental health. Wow, I'm inspired by that change because I don't think that any of us grew up with that liberty. And I really see a trickle up from our younger generation of being to talk, that ability to talk more about mental health and our mental state more than ever. And there's new programs that are originating from the business place. 
And I think that is a real powerful modality to come from because it reaches the match it, the, the masses. And those of us that have traditionally not had any experience talking about feelings, emotions, you know, maybe needing a mental health day, all of that. So we are seeing a shifting culture. And I, I think I'm going to attribute it to, to COVID, what we saw there. Yeah, well, I'm with you on that. I also have teenagers and I've noticed many of them facing some challenges during COVID, of course. And mm -hmm. interestingly enough, my son, when he went back to school after sheltering in was all over, um, one of, he wasn't such close to one of his really good buddies. And I said, well, you know, where's so-and-so? I never hear you talk about so-and-so. And he said, you know, he's been really dark and kind of negative and I really need to protect my mental health. And so I haven't been spending a lot of time with him. And it was mm -hmm. interesting because when he first, my son first said, I really need to protect my mental health. I kind of was a little bit alar alerted by yes. such a phrase because you're right in our generation, we didn't really talk that way. But as I leaned into the sentence, I really need to protect my mental health. And I just want to not spend so much time with him. I was quite impressed with the recognition that he had. It wasn't a stigma. It wasn't negative. He really felt like his mental health, how he feels, how he thinks was important for him to keep sacred and to surround himself by important people. Mm -hmm. And so thank you for allowing me to share that because you're right. Sometimes we hear the word mental health and we immediately think problem. And what and I feel even from our paradigm, right? Our beautiful children. I mean, you've had such a, a heart piercing experience from your own child, just as I have experienced. And it just gives me so much hope in our future with what we're able to do right now. So let's talk about that. Is there some ways that we can, you can suggest for our listeners, things that we can do right now today that are protecting or honoring our mental health? Yes. Well, the first thing I would say is that, um, you know, this life is, it's more than us. It's, it's really a better together type of a life. We are social creatures first. And it's really important that we have enough support, enough, enough uh, interaction in our lives, enough interest, enough uh, passions as far as what we want to get to put together with creativity. It's really all of that. And I really emphasize for anybody that I'm talking to in, in early recovery, especially that we begin to look at what they can add into their lives as far as interest that really uh, raise their energy level. If we can if we can find the activities that raise our energy level, and if we can become really present at that moment, take it in, take the light in around us, take the love in around us from our inner group that we feel safe. It's there that I believe if we can let that in deep in to the crevices of who we are, it's then that new ideas can occur to us where we can transcend our experience of where we're at, if that makes sense. Mm, it makes total sense. Last night, it was 8.30. I said to my husband, let's go for a bike ride. You know, it's the end of the day. We've already had dinner. The light's coming down. We love to ride our tandem bike. And I said, let's go. And so off we went. It wasn't a long ride, but it was exactly what you said just getting out of the everyday, doing something we passionately love. The sun was coming down. It was just glowing in our <laughs> eyes. I just was able, because I, on the bike, I ride in the back and my husband steers, was able to close my eyes and just really take it all in. It was only a 25 minute ride, but it was just so enriching and so fulfilling. And so I know exactly what you mean. And not enough of us are doing that. We're so busy on the hamster wheel. We're going from thing to thing. We're trying to reach the, the brass ring. There's all this you know, movement towards desire and aspiration that we're so busy yeah. in the movement, we're not being in the moment. 
And I think yes. part of what you're saying is that. Yes. You know, and I want to just go over what you just said in slow motion yeah. <laughs> because I just love it. And, you know, I'm a huge advocate of presentism. And that is when you're on that bike ride that you're letting the light of nature in, you know, your companionship, the, the sun, the mountains, the beauty, the nature, all of that contributes to a strong sense of who we are, which always translate it for me. When you let it land properly, it always translates into the love that we have inside. Mm -hmm. And from there, we're leveraged as an individual from where we were to be able to do more, to receive more inspiration, to have more occur to us about that next step of what we're doing. And not only that, to be like in a riper state, if you will, to connect to other people, because that's what it's about. It's so beautiful that you say that because we, you put really beautiful words to it. And I think many of us who are listening, and I hope if you're listening, that there was a part of you that felt exactly what Renee was sharing. You felt the difference when you connect with nature and when you hear the sounds and you smell the air and you feel it and there's a sense of you doing what you love. There is a very powerful ability within you to awaken to what's next for you. And we love to bike ride, but so many people love to dance, love to paint, you know, love to mm -hmm. hike, love to be outside, love to garden, you know, love to just walk their dog. And mm -hmm. in when you are in a state of what you enjoy, you really are allowing yourself to be more creative and to step into opportunity. I truly oh, believe that. Yes. It's such a great suggestion for, yes. obviously, for mental health. Do what you love. I always say that. Do what you love. Yes. And, you know, I kind of look at us all on a spectrum because, you know, if we're CEOs in a Fortune 500 company, the amount of love we're going to need to be letting into our lives and the health of the relationships and the number of uh, relationships for that support for us to do something larger and bigger than ourselves is going to be significant. Exactly. But now let's just reel it in, attenuate the situation to somebody who maybe is in early recovery. They're going to need a very similar program of just that where there's a larger team working with them, where they have the ability to exercise and, and, and just be still to let that love come in because our society is so fast paced that great things may be happening and they're just sliding right off of us. Mm -hmm. We're not taking it in and that really affects our spirit it affects the cells of our bodies. It affects who we are, our energy level. Can we love? How much can we love? How much can we create? All of that. So, you know, in the example of this bike ride, you know, with your husband and taking everything in, you know, it's then that it's the suggestion to the clients that I have here that we work with that it's just then that maybe you sit down and you think about what you're working on, your priorities. Maybe you take that moment and you use it as a canvas to create something new in your life because all of the energy is there. You're in a centered place, you're connected. And it's then that so much is possible and I want to bring this up because, you know, the best of athletes, the coaching that they're given is to be creating out of the right now, the mm. present versus about 95% of us are creating 
either from the past or the future, and it's not a strong place. And especially wow. our past in some cases, mm -hmm. especially if we've had trauma. But there's a quick way to loosen up. And that is if we can really allow ourselves into presentism, letting love in, letting us and, and, and envisioning a higher vibration and being able to hold it and admire it without any thoughts of future or past, if that makes sense. It and makes then, so much sense. I'm just literally like getting goosebumps because we sometimes call it our outdoor office <laughs> because so many times when we're cycling, we come up with really great ideas and real neat things unfold. And almost every single time we come home from our bike ride, our kids will say, how was your bike ride? And I'll say, oh, we had this great idea. Or, oh, we decided to do this. Or, oh, now we're going to do this. And it's like, you're right. That presentness allows us to see what's possible for the future. And I really adore what you said about not living in the past because we get stuck in our stories. We get stuck in our past. We get stuck in our imprint and being in the presentness, being in just this moment, what can I create mm -hmm. from here going forward mm -hmm. is so, so magical. I love it. I'm just so into this conversation. That being said, we have about three minutes left and I would love to interview you again and have you back on the show. I do want to address one thing that you did say is that when people are going through recovery, they definitely need a community. They need a support. And I think now more than ever, when people are grieving, when people are struggling, when people are having a hard time at work, when people are having relationship issues, we kind of like run for the hills and we don't support people. And we kind of think like, oh, I'll just leave them be. I'll just let them do it on their own. You know, I don't want to address the issue. And I really appreciate you saying that when people are going through anything, we need each other. We need to create connections with supportive individuals. And today being about connections, I think that's so valuable. Would and, you and share you know, a, a, the last little essence of that? You know, I would really say that um, love just overcomes everything. Uh, I have an evidence-based treatment center, doctors, therapists. I have a housing program of which amazing things come out of because it's safe. There's full of love. There's so much connection, which is just so healing. Mm -hmm. I can't even say we have a we have a 95% employment rate with people who have been chronically homeless and chronically addicted. And we are changing the way addiction has been looked at, mental health has been looked at. We are normalizing it and introducing tools that are given to CEOs that are given, uh, that are just cutting edge. So that's, and it's a passion of mine because I come from the trenches. Um, I, I have experienced time in East LA where I've been exposed to foster care, which has really made me think about my life. You know, um, 20 elementary schools, 30 schools, looking at children who have experienced so much complex trauma. And it's brought me to pivotal moments of what is it that can be different that I can do with my life. And I think a natural evolution to the here and now of best practices, what can be done to really change the experience of somebody that is deep in the trenches, feeling so alone and not knowing what to do what is it then that can game change? And it's my purpose, it's my passion. And my personal quote is through consciousness, pur purpose and passion, we can do more. And I wholeheartedly believe it with all my heart. You are a true beacon and an absolute uh, just 
example of exactly what igniting humanity is all about your experience helped you become who you are right now and you love it you are passionate about it it is it's a devotion that you have that we all can feel and i'm immediately thinking every treatment program should be <laughs> directed by you and if your modality could spread out throughout the country and throughout the planet how much love and support is needed in during these times and I just honor you so deeply. The work you're doing is incredible. Folks, you can find out more about what Renee is up to on the link below. And I just wanna applaud you. Thank you so much for being an advocate for humanity and the work that you do. It's been a joy to talk with you and have you on the show. And Lady JB, thanks for everything you do because I just love everything that you stand for, your organization, and, and it's, it's also so beautiful and life-changing. Thank you. Amen. Right back at you, darling. Thank you so much. I love having these conversations because they're in-depth, they're true, they're honest, they're authentic, and they make a difference. They start getting you to think differently, to turn the cogs of the wheel in the mind, to start shifting and tinkering around with what I've been told, what I've been conditioned, what I thought I should believe, what somebody just imprinted upon me to I have the choice, I have the power, I have the ability, and through love and compassion and connection, so much can blossom, so much can flourish. And so it's Friday, the weekend before Mother's Day, and I just wanna bless all the mothers out there and everyone who has a mother, who is a mother, who is uh, connected to their mother or may have lost their mother, please be uh, conscious and aware and just dipping into the praise and the gratitude and the love we have for our mothers. Go do something this weekend for yourself to honor that time and that connection, get outdoors, be in spirit and be in nature and be just in the being. And that itself is so powerful. If you'd like to do something special for your mom this weekend, we have a wonderful project. It's called the uh, Bouquet of Hope. With $12 donation to our charity, you can send your mom a digital bouquet of hope, 12 roses and a digital bouquet, and that $12 will go towards 12 bricks in one of our schools. We truly believe it is an incredible program. Instead of spending extravagant amount of money on roses, spend some money buying your mom bricks of hope, and those bricks will be a part of building our schools in third world countries. Well, we love having you on the show. And if you'd like to be one of our guests, you can always give us a, uh, some information about you on our type form. And we would love to consider having you as a guest. And if you'd like to watch this episode or any of our other episodes, we have a beautiful platform that gives all of our episodes availability for free. And of course, you can go to Traverse TV and watch on our VOD channel, our Facebook channel and our YouTube channel. Well, we love and bless you all. Happy Mother's Day. Big hugs and kisses to you. See you Monday. Now, more than ever, we need to come together to connect with one another. We need to feel the truth in who we are and let go of everything that's happened in the past. We need to empower every person on the planet and awaken hearts, enliven souls, come together, laugh, play, rejoice, connect, create, and love. It's time to ignite humanity. We want you to be a part of something that will impact the future for everyone. We want you to tell your story, share your ignite moment, show people who you truly are, be a part of igniting humanity and making a difference in the world and all of our futures.